You said some of the genius shit ever. Do you understand when you took these fucking links out? I thought these was like almost 50 points. I thought these was, when you told yeah. me these were mirrors and I zoomed in on them, uh, I'm like, yeah, that's smart as fuck. You had four of these bitches on, or it's over. Bro, it's already Bro, you over. Got, it's already <laughs> over with <laughs> two. <laughs> shit is it's actually over. crazy. tuning into this week's video, you're gonna be seeing some very special pieces, a million dollar Rolex, celebrity guest appearance, some awesome deliveries, and some really overall cool footage. If you like the video, drop a like, comment, subscribe down below, give us some feedback, hit the notification bell, and thank you guys, check out this week's video. So we just got back from Dubai, super long trip, two weeks, haven't done that in years, but it was a lot of fun. Just have a lot of catching up to do now. We went there, we went to India first. It was my grandma's 70th birthday. It was really nice for her. I could tell she was super happy to have us all three there, me and my brothers. Most of our intermediate family was there actually. After that, we went to Dubai and we had a ceremony. It, in Hindu culture, it's called Janya. And it's basically like a bar mitzvah for Indian people. It's introducing your, uh, a boy to manhood. It's essential to do before getting married and um, my grandma's getting old and we wanted to make sure she was around for the ceremony. So yeah, it was actually huge. We had 300 guests. Uh, here's some pictures from the event. Tell me what you guys think. Hey guys, what's going on? Just wanted to check in with you this morning because something very exciting did happen this morning. So maybe you guys saw on Instagram, maybe you guys saw on the websites. However, AP and Patek dropped new collections and pieces today that I'm happy to talk to you guys about. Now, in my opinion, this is probably one of the most controversial drops of the year just because it is so interesting and unique and there's just so much going on. So I'm gonna walk you through a few of the pieces that Patek and AP dropped today. I'm gonna give you my personal opinions on them. And I'm gonna give you my top three favorite from the collections and I'll tell you why. Jumping right in, we're gonna start talking about Paddock. There's a lot going on here, guys. There's some stuff that's, in my opinion, good. There's some stuff that, in my opinion, is not so good. Overall, I would say probably eight out of 10 impressed as far as the collection overall, but let's dive into a few of these pieces. I'm gonna tell you what I think would change the pieces and make them a little bit better. I'm gonna tell you what Paddock did here, and you guys can let me know in the comments down below what you think about them overall. So diving right in, let's start from top left, which is going to be the 5373P split second platinum grand complication from Paddock. Now, in my opinion, this is definitely gonna be one of the best drops that Paddock has had of this year. However, there is a few things about this watch that I will say are amazing and things that I'm not so impressed with. So diving right into it, I love that Paddock stepped outside the box a little bit here. They went a little bit against the grain. They threw the red hands on the watch. They have the two-tone stitched strap in gray. Absolutely stunning watch. In my opinion, they perfectly executed, especially in platinum. When you see a lot of these grand complications and very complicated Paddock, I love to see white, gold, and platinum. I just think that it's a very nice touch. It really brings the watch to life a little bit more, and it really brings that value. You know, when you're spending so much money on a grand complication to have a precious metal in there, I think it's just you know necessary. I don't think that there should be anything other than perfection when you're executing a watch like this. And when you're doing it with a material like platinum, I think they just knocked it out of the park. However, my only complaint about this watch overall is it being a lefty. And I'm sorry to all the lefties out there, but I understand there is not the largest selection of lefty watches on the market or for people that wear watches on their right wrist. Um, but this watch, in my opinion, would have just been absolutely like showstopper, game over, paddock, complication if they just made it a standard right-facing crown. The left-facing crown, I get it, I understand it, I know where it plays in the market. However, I think that they could have just executed this a little bit better. Honestly, it would have been cool to see an option. I know it's very difficult to do, but if they made this an option where you could order it as a lefty, but it was a standard, I would say, right-facing crown watch, I think it would have been a lot better. So I would have liked to see Paddock do that, but hey, overall, I love this watch. It came out amazing and they did such a good job with it. This to me, people should definitely be looking at. Moving right along, let's hop into another watch that I absolutely fell in love with. I've been on a green kick here for a little bit, been loving the color green. Um, actually have a new watch to show you guys that I got recently that is gonna be featuring a green dial, which I'm very happy to show it to you. But let's get back to Paddock and we're gonna be talking about the 5204G. So this guy, is absolutely stunning. Perpetual calendar, green strap, two-tone stitching, amazing dial. I cannot wait to see this piece in person. 
Like I said before, grand complication that they did in white gold, overall perfectly executed, would not say a single thing wrong with this watch. My favorite part of this watch is definitely going to be the pushers. I love that they continue this trend of having these like perfectly executed pushers on their watches. I don't know, something about just paddock pushers just gets me really excited. And overall, this watch to me, they knocked it out of the park, did so amazing with it. Very happy to see it in the collection. Next up, we're going to be moving on to two, I would say three pieces to me that I don't know exactly what Paddock's doing here. I don't know if they pulled maybe a card out of AP's book. I, I don't know exactly what's going on, but the 5990, all right. So this is probably gonna be one of the most controversial drops of this entire line, being the fact that they dropped the 5990. When I saw it on Instagram and on Paddock website this morning, I said to myself, what is going on? Looks to me like the exactly same watch. Upon doing a little bit more research, I noticed that they did change the dial slightly. I would say to a little bit of a lesser gray, leaning more towards blue. Overall, I'm not too pleased with it. I don't really understand it. I'm sure the premium in the market's gonna be ridiculous. I myself would probably advise customers to stay away from this watch on drop, just being that I know the premium is gonna be insane and I just don't get this watch. Maybe someone can drop a comment down below and tell me like what I'm missing here, but I really thought this was the same 5990 that they took the picture of and then just dropped it again on the website and said, we're remaking it. I really don't get it here. So maybe I'm missing something here, but this to me was probably the most disappointing um, of all of the whole new collection. Not a big fan of it. Moving right along, let's talk about another piece that's gonna be a little bit controversial that I think kind of gone all the way there, but probably could have been executed a little bit better, which is gonna be the 5712. So as you guys know, the 5712 with the blue dial stainless steel is probably going to go down in history as one of the most popular and beautiful watches, in, in my opinion, that Paddock has ever made. Um, maybe not just my opinion, maybe the whole market will, will definitely agree with me on that. I'm a huge, huge advocate for the 5712. I think that the value is great. I think the watch is perfectly executed and beautiful. However, this rose gold option with, the, I would say brownish chocolate dial, not a fan, not a fan at all. I really think they could have done much better with this. I would have liked to see a different color dial. I would have liked to see them really execute um, this watch just in a completely different way. I definitely know that the market was really looking for rose gold. Same thing with the 5990 that they recently dropped with the blue dial. Market absolutely loved that rose gold with the blue dial. Maybe the market will love this chocolate dial, but to me, this just really is not hitting the way that it should be hitting, in my opinion. So I look forward to see what this watch looks like in person. Hopefully it does do justice in person, but as of right now, this watch really, I'm a little bit disappointed with it, to be quite honest with you. Now, a watch that I was not disappointed with that I think actually Paddock did great, and I know for sure they took this move from AP, is going to be the new 7118. So this new 7118 um, with this beautiful gradient bezel that I'm sure everyone's going to love, this watch is gonna be an absolute killer, guys. I'm telling you, the premium is gonna be ridiculous. All, all women and wives and girlfriends and everyone out there is going to be wanting this watch. 100% looks amazing. AP actually did a very similar model, which will pop up on the screen here. A while ago, it was a novelty, only one year, did amazing. When people were buying that watch, no one understood it. I think nowadays people will definitely understand these sapphire bezels and the value that, and how difficult it is to make a watch like this and the true value there. So I think this watch is gonna be quite popular. I think it looks stunning, no complaints at all. Moving on to another piece, the 5811 in white gold. Once again, you know, cool watch. I like the white gold aspect of it. To me, I wish that Paddock maybe did something a little bit different just because there is the 5711P. There's all the different 5711s. I would have liked to see them go a little bit outside the box. I understand where they're going with this. It does look like, you know, the 5711 is going to be discontinued now. So that is a sign there for all those guys out there that have been collecting Nautiluses. In my opinion, it looks like definitely the 5711 is going to be out of catalog now moving forward, but overall cool white gold. Yeah, I get it, but I wish they had just done a little bit something different to it to commemorate the 5711. Another piece that I really like from this collection is gonna be um, 5935A. This guy definitely going to be in my top three. Love the way that they did this watch. My only complaint about this world timer is I wish they had done something maybe with precious metals, potentially a white gold or platinum. I think it would have accented that salmon dial really well. Overall, beautiful watch, really well executed, and I just, like I said, guys, 
put a precious metal on the world timer. I think it would look amazing. I love a lot of the older world timers like the 5131J, et cetera. I think that the gold looks amazing. I kind of understand, you know, where this was derived from. World timer, 5212A kind of vibe to it with the strap. I get where it's coming from, but I would have really liked to see a precious metal on there. Now, as far as the collection in total, this guy is going to be my favorite drop that Paddock has had in a very long time. Moving along to an absolute showstopper is going to be the 7968-300R Aquanaut, 39.9 millimeters, full-size Aquanaut in rose gold with a beautiful sapphire gradient bezel. Absolute showstopper. I cannot wait to see this watch. It's absolutely phenomenal. Dial looks amazing, almost like a mother of pearl look to it, at least on the website. The only complaint about this is Paddock, you gotta get rid of that red strap. That white strap needs to be on there 24 seven. Not a single 7968 should be leaving the store on that red strap. White strap is the way to go, 100%. Cannot wait to see this watch in person. Definitely dying to grab one. Well worth the premium. As you guys saw before, I just put together a sapphire necklace collection for one of my customers. I know how difficult it is to source sapphires, cut sapphires, set up a piece like this. I'm telling you this watch is gonna be crazy expensive and people are gonna go absolutely bananas for it. So I can't wait to see what that does in the market. And overall, these are my opinions on the new Paddock Collection drop. I know that I told you guys that I'd be making a top three, so I'm gonna tell you right now. Number one, definitely 5204G in green. Absolute killer, Paddock killed it with that. Next is definitely gonna be the 7968, really beautiful watch. And following that up, I'm gonna be, this is a tough one, because that split seconds is beautiful, but I think definitely the 5935A. That watch to me with that salmon dial and strap looks really nice. The weight's gonna be good. Can't wait to see it. So let me know what you guys think down below about Paddock and if there's any other critiques or criticism or anything that you would like to say about the watches, please let me know and feel free to give us feedback. Thank you guys. So moving on to the AP collection here, although many of you out there know that AP is my favorite brand, I will say that overall, I do not have the most positive comments to state about AP's new drop from today. So as many of you guys might have seen on Instagram or online or on the website, AP did drop a new collection today. It varies models from 41 to 37 millimeter, although in my opinion, they're pretty much all the same. However, they are varying in colors, which I will dive into later. So looking at this collection overall, I myself do not understand really what AP is looking for here. Making a time only watch I think that maybe I'd understand a little bit better if I get an idea of how they're going to look in person. However, just on initial um, glances of this collection overall, I would say that AP really could have done this better, guys. I, I really don't understand exactly what they're going for here with so many different colorways of the same watch, time only watch. Are they going for more of like a jewelry look? Are they going for more of, I honestly don't know. To me overall, pretty disappointing drop from AP. I'd have to see them in person. My biggest complaint is that although there is um, 37 and 41 millimeters matching and that guys and girls are gonna be able to, you know, do a his and her setup for these watches, I just don't understand how people are gonna be able to differentiate between the colors because they all, all are very similar. So that, you know, obviously between the orange and the yellow and the red and the green, you're gonna be able to tell the difference, but this sort of like blue and baby blue and darker blue and purple, I, I think people are gonna have a really tough time deciding which watch they're going to get. I don't know how the premiums are going to work for these models because they are so similar. Um, overall, I would have liked to see AP spend a little bit more time working on something new. I think that they did an amazing job with the blue ceramic perpetual calendar. I love that they're doing the one drop black ceramic chronograph with the blue dial for charity. I like a lot of the things they're doing, but overall to me, this drop just wasn't very well executed. I don't know how the market's going to react to this. My initial opinion is that it's going to be a little bit negative, um, but who knows? We'll have to see what happens with it. Overall, interesting, very bold statement from AP that they're able to make a time-only watch with semi-precious stones. Probably will have exorbitant premiums to them and they will be very popular in the market, but I don't think that overall the general consensus of the market long-term is going to be hey, these were you know very well executed and great watches. So let's see what happens, guys. This is just my opinions on it. 
I'm sure there's going to be a market for them. I'm sure that people are going to like them uh, to some degree, but overall, I'm not the most impressed with this drop. So let me know what you guys think down below. We'll pop up, of course, a picture of the whole AP rainbow here on the screen so you guys can see it and talk to you guys soon. Thank you. Whoa, oh, oh. Actually, one of the crayons come out, and I was able to sign autographs to one of the crayons. Nah, I didn't know that part. <laughs> know that no part. way. Are you kidding me right now? Nah, that's different. That's sick. That's yo, imagine someone's like, yo, let me get an autograph. You are signing autographs? Bust that shit out. That's crazy. That was one of my first autographs. Yeah, that's crazy. 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 Yeah, um, same size, but I want them to be up. I want two more, and I'm Gucci. So this one is 24? Yeah, both 24. They're both 24, yeah. yeah. No, nah, these are both 24, so then you want to go longer or shorter? I want to go a little bit longer. So you can do a 25 and a 26. Yeah. Cool. The fuck around! Is that the new stock box? New box? Yeah, the fuck around! Can I see that one yet? Yeah. Yeah. Put your watches here, oh, lift fire. this up, put some jewelry there, and that's the travel case. That's fire. That's yeah, not, it's not the Louis Vuitton one, but it's Taki Trey. No, there's a Taki, it's the only one that matters. Exactly. <laughs> the only one that matters. That's what we do with Yeah, we're going to give him this too, bro. All right, I'm going to have a nice box holder for when you travel. Right. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, here, let me help you with that. That shit's a gold bar, bro. Right. <laughs> yeah, this is with the screw, right? That one? For real, bro. It's crazy, heavy. I'm gonna make you two more too. I'm gonna work on it tomorrow. Yeah, that's, how long would it be done? Uh, 10 days. Maybe you guys will come to the shoot tomorrow too, right? Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure yeah. You made, you said one of some of the genius shit ever. Do you understand when you took these fucking links out? I thought these was, uh, uh, I thought these was like almost 50 points. I thought these was, when well, you told me these were mirrors and I zoomed in on them, uh, I'm like, yeah, that's smart as fuck. Cause bro, nobody go, bro, from here to there, I, I can't, I can't tell. I'm telling you, bro, bro. I have and I do, that, I do this shit I have every day. I have millions he fooled me. Right. I'm like, wait, what? But when I got up close on it, I seen the mirrors, but guess what? You have four of these bitches on, or it's over. Bro, it's already bro, you over. Got, it's already <laughs> over with <laughs> too. <laughs> shit is it's actually over. crazy. You got another one for him? Yeah, I do. I got another Why are you taking them out one at a time, bro? You're making them, you're teasing yeah, them, bro. I'm like, no, this dude is like, yo, like, he appetizer ass. Like, he wouldn't make for a I got it in white, same one, same size. Yeah, same size everything. Nah, you don't He give me the white one. You don't want to see the ember, no more for me. Well, I can't go wrong with the ember star. Don't have brother. Titanium Turbion, limited of 50 pieces. Only sold. LeBron got this. He does have it. Kevin Hart has one. I the know. green one? Who else has it? Yeah, Kevin Hart is the green one. I didn't know. Kevin Hart is everything. He's an AP ambassador. <laughs> yeah. He buys them directly. He, he has some. Mayweather free. does too. Mayweather's got good stuff. Mayweather has everything. That's the only yellow gold that we have. Okay. Because it's very rare that AP uses yellow gold. Actually, besides the skeleton, that's all this, we have. What year is this? 2008. Yeah, We're the original this. seller of that watch. Oh. You know what? You look one. right at it. That shit is a full pound of gold. That is 80,000. But it's almost, almost, it's 2.4 pounds of gold, I think it is. Bro, it's so heavy. It's very heavy. Already known, you could hit someone with that bro, and get knocked out. This is so heavy, bro. I think I can pull that bitch out. Oh, <laughs> fuck. Oh, shit. I got to take a picture of that one. That one's different. That one's Up, different. Sean. That one's different, boy. They go toe to toe. You said you, said you don't have the purple frosted, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't pull it out. He you told me I don't have the purple frost. Oh, no. don't disrespect Tom. Come on, man. <laughs> these boys got these. That's and the boy up, man. They up some, they up some dog shit on your ass, boy. Yeah, he literally goes, yo. Yeah, I dare you disrespect that boy. You see that purple on the dress, boy. Talk about something. This you boy, the one. You sleep. These this boys is got the one. It's a very special watch. This is the one. It's a very special watch. We actually How much have that right now? Right now, that watch is like 275. Yeah, Everything went about. down. Everything went crazy. Down. Everything crazy. went down. Yeah, 150. And this my watch is what, nigga? No, 
Still five ninety five. Still five ninety five. Right? Yeah, so yeah, you, yeah. You compare this watch to a whole other. You should be. You, you bought know. after everything went. Right, right, right. Yeah. After everything went down, you came in perfect timing. Perfect timing. That went watch on. I sold the first. Oh, seven hundred thousand. No, the first one I ever sold is, was 950000 Oh, God. First one ever. He's like, not ah, playing. He's not playing at all. I see these shit. Crazy you might have watches. like maybe five or six million in watches. Hey, y'all, how, how much is that orange one? Lamar. This one? With the diamonds on it. 245 245 It's all rose gold with aftermarket diamonds. Kevin Hart, honestly, though, actually, you want to hear the, the craziest watch collection? That, you like your home so place? that plane like would have been more. It's nice. Johan Blake, we're selling right now for like 290 box papers, everything. Um, the craziest collection that I've seen is Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran, Ed Sheeran is or not even, playing. Or even Kevin O'Leary. Kevin O'Leary is not playing. But Ed Sheeran, believe it or not, has Bro. probably a 10 or $12 million collection, I would guess. At least. I gotta get all around. I gotta get So my Richard is the same price as this. So do you understand that people forgot because they don't understand like how many seats? You guys don't know, the world don't know. Because people don't look at credits and stuff no more. But I've been writing so much shit behind the scenes. Ariana Grande, Chris Brown. I've been writing a lot of records behind the scenes. But it's just under my real name, Keyshawn Anderson. It's not under Sean Kingston. So people are like, oh, where the fuck is he? He fell off. Now, I'm coming out, I got everybody co-signing me. Bieber, NBA Youngboy, Chris Brown, um, 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 Sway Lee, Ozuna, Trippy Red. Like, it's about to be to the point where niggas is going to be like, wait, what the fuck? This nigga just is... <laughs> No, tell me. No, for real. People are gonna be like, I and I'm doing video shoot. shoots to most of the songs. Like, I already got a video shoot with Trippy in the cut already. I got a video shoot already. With the only thing I gotta get is NBA Young Boy. That's gonna be hard. We're getting the video shoot. We're getting the tomorrow. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Two hundred fifty thousand. Looking at two hundred fifty thousand on the custom chain, man. Paddock. Lambo truck on the wrist. Yeah, it'll say like when you go look for. There's some Mercedes on my fingers. Like a legit gold bar on this. I think that's that's, that's a Venador around my neck. <laughs> hey guys, what's going on? So uh, hopefully you guys watched last week's video and you saw the clip of me referencing a watch that we were going to be having in towards the end of this week that I was happy to bring to you. I did give a little challenge to let people guess what that watch actually was going to be. A few of you, of you guys out there definitely did guess it correctly. And I was not too surprised because at the end of the day, with the remarks that I made regarding this watch, it is not too difficult to guess who the exact person was that I was referring to for this watch. But thank you guys so much again for participating in that. And now is the grand finale. I am happy to show you guys this watch. Definitely very exciting moment for us at Timepiece Trading. Probably going to go down in history as one of our biggest vintage sales that we'll ever make. This is upper echelon for Rolex collecting. After you've already passed through all of the modern Rolexes and you start looking back to vintage, there is a big plethora of opportunities as far as what you can buy. However, this guy, this customer, my very good friend, went straight to the top. He picked out a very crazy watch. I was really happy to source it. Honestly, not going to say that it was incredibly difficult to source because I did know of this watch and I did know that the guy that was selling it would be interested in selling it if the opportunity did come to be. So that opportunity was the beginning of this week and here we have it today at the office and let's break her out. So guys, this is going to be a very special 6239 yellow gold Paul Newman Daytona that is actually going to be not on the Oyster bracelet, but on the Jubilee bracelet. So many of you guys have probably seen this watch on an Oyster online. Maybe you've seen other variations of this watch. This specific configuration is very special. It's actually from 1973. Incredibly rare with this style in yellow gold to be a 6239 on a Jubilee bracelet. Honestly, one of the most stunning watches that I've ever held and seen in person. When you touch and feel this watch, you really understand how incredible these pieces are and how special it is to have this watch in the office. Honestly, would not be surprised if I never see one of these ever again. Got it today, gonna be gone by this weekend, already setting up delivery plans for the customer for, to take delivery of this watch. I'm sure you guys are gonna be very shocked and excited to see who's actually purchasing this watch. Although we will not get that on video, you guys definitely will see this watch online. Just to give you a few facts about the Paul Newman Daytona, when this watch was being originally sold, 
A lot of people were not big fans of the Paul Newmans and they were actually not selling as well as they should have been at the time. Many people bought this watch, they wore the heck out of it, they beat the heck out of it. I'm sure you guys have seen the famous Antiques Roadshow clip where there was actually a Vietnam veteran who purchased a similar watch and had never worn it, left it in the bank. It was very polarizing back then. Either you bought the watch and wore it or you kind of tucked it away and forgot about it. You have to remember when these watches were being sold in the 60s, 70s, 80s, etc. This watch was very, very, very expensive for the time to spend two or three or $400 on a stainless steel watch back then was absolutely insane. So a lot of people weren't even able to afford this. They were priced out or they bought it and used it as utility or they bought it and tucked it away. There's very few of them, multiple different configurations, very hard to find watch. This watch in particular, just to show you guys, I think that you might've seen this maybe in a John Mayer interview before, but this watch is super crunchy. So just to show you how little this watch was actually used, an almost 50 year old watch, check this out. Listen to how crunchy this is going to be. So you guys can actually hear it being wound, which is absolutely phenomenal for this watch. We actually just had it checked out, make sure everything was perfect and good to go. Watch is 100% running, work, working perfect, unpolished, amazing example. Really excited to deliver this over to my customer. And thank you guys again for following us and allowing to, for us to have this opportunity to show you this amazing piece to you. And we hope to bring more pieces like this to you in the future. If you guys are a fan of vintage, definitely drop a comment down below. Let us know what you think about this guy. I will give you one quick look at her again before she goes out. And most likely we will never see her ever again. Absolutely phenomenal. And I'm very proud to bring this to you guys. All right, guys, I didn't get to put this in the last clip, but I didn't want to reference it because I get asked all the time about this specific topic and I wanted to touch base on it a little bit now. So a lot of people often ask me, hey, you know, I want to get into the watch industry. As you may have seen in the previous clip, I was just talking about how it wasn't difficult to source. I want you guys to know that to find this watch is absolutely impossible, by the way. Like you cannot find this watch. No matter how hard you look for it, you're not going to be able to find it. The reason that it was a little bit easier for me to find this specific watch is because like I said, I knew someone that had it and if the right time came up, he was going to let it go. One of the biggest and most important things for the watch industry, and I tell people this all the time, is networking. Make sure to connect with everyone, even if they're not in your specific sector of business. For instance, I'm not necessarily a vintage watch dealer, right? If you know the people that have the right pieces, when someone does call you for it, it will be much easier to locate and find them. So for instance, I had a customer that was looking for this watch. I knew exactly who had it. The stars aligned, we got the deal done, and it was a very quick process for the customer and for the seller. So oftentimes you might spend months looking for a watch like this. I was able to do it very fast, and that's due to my extensive network of people. Whenever people reach out to me, even if they're not in my sector, let's say they're an Omega dealer, or they're a vintage dealer, Neo vintage dealer, or Breitling tag, whatever it may be, something that maybe I don't sell on a daily basis, I always make sure to take time to network with them, connect with them, and make sure that I have them in the back of my, I would say, closet of people that I can buy stuff from. Whenever I need to bust them out, I can hit them up and be like, hey, we connected before, do you remember me? Do you sell this watch? Can we talk? And that's the same thing for customers. If you're selling a watch to a customer, don't be afraid to reach out to them and say, hey, you know, what else do you have in your collection? What do you want to let go? And oftentimes things will click a lot better when you do have that situation where you know someone has something, someone else is looking for it, you can connect the dots, and obviously business happens there. So that's just a little tip for you guys out there that ask all the time, how do I grow in the watch industry? Networking. Networking is the most important thing. Talk to as many people as you can. Reach out to people, connect with them. Same thing for us. Don't be afraid to hit us up. If you have a question, if you're looking for something, if you're buying, if you're selling, if you want to get in the industry, we're happy to meet with you. I meet with people all the time that want to come in and just talk and say, hey, you know, I want to get into the industry. How do I go about this? What should I do? And I tell them all the same thing. Network, network, network. Your network is your net worth. So definitely take that into consideration, guys. He just, he's literally standing on the corner, he just doesn't have a Yeah, I've never even held one before, actually. Pulling? Oh, okay. You can see there's still stickers, because it's brand new 2022. Uh, so I think you're pulling up a little bit. This. Do you think I can see you with the red strap? Does it take long to... Yeah, no problem, we can do it. Should you yeah. yeah. What was your first watch that you ever got? 
Uh, a tag. You still have it? Yeah. No way. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> but you don't wear it often. Uh, not not since I got the. It's really Tag, Hublot, and Roger Dubuis that, that I have so far. Uh, so I always wear Roger Dubuis over that. I would, I would uh, hope so. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. Is that that would be a really tough choice in the morning if you have to decide between. Yeah. Them. Well, I'm one of the guys that like never yeah, takes double, a watch double off. Double turn or tag? You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> You must do this like 20 times a day, right? <laughs> I can do this in my sleep, to be honest with you. I've changed a lot of arm straps. I, I actually really enjoy it. It's, it's therapeutic. We used to, um, what we used to do is when we first started, we only had a couple RMs. Mm. And it, it sounds funny enough, and YouTube is actually gonna love this, but when we only had like three or four RMs, people would come in like on Monday, right? And then they'd look at our watches and they'd be like, this is all you have? And we'd be like, yeah, we only have three or four right now. And then what we do is we change all the straps mm. to different colors. Uh, so they come back and be like, oh, you got all new stuff. And I'd be like, yeah, there's, you know, new stuff in there. And then they'd be like, they'd be like, is it really new? I'm like, no, we changed the straps. <laughs> but um, it makes the watch look completely different. It gives it like a whole new life. It's like wrapping your car, you know, it's like yeah. you have a car, you wrap it in a new color and you're like, feel like That's you true. got something completely brand new. Yeah. So that's the same thing with the straps. And it's cool because you can change them like on the fly mm. for an outfit, for anything. Now the only thing you have to worry about when you're changing the strap for an RM is that if it if it feels weird, as if like you're forcing something, mm. you just have to be a little bit careful about that because you can break the screw, which okay. is a little bit of a headache, but it's very rare for that to happen. Um, of all the straps I've, sh I've changed, I've only myself broken one, mm. um, thankfully. But even if it does happen, it's something that you can fix with these. So, look at that. That's crazy. Yeah, that does look really nice actually. That material is very special. It's like what everyone wants from RM. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you have to pick what you like. Um, yeah. That's the most important thing. But if I will tell you that, like I said, 70% of our customers that buy a first time RM, they end up with NTPT some way or another. Yeah. If not, then they get ceramic with NTPT sides because mm. it has that nice, nice lightweight feel. Yeah. So how much is this one? Uh, what do you call me? 527.5, I believe. Brand new 2022, mm. full set. With the papers, right? Yeah. Dated this year, probably, I think dated like very, very recently, right? Uh, they're July or better. Could do 515. 515? Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> um, let's do it. We All can right. do 515. Cool. We'll do 515. 515, you'll be happy with a new watch. And we'll happy. help you out with some straps and yeah, uh, hopefully we can do some more business Definitely. in the yeah. future. I'd really yeah. appreciate that. Uh, I'm actually I'm looking for something for my wife for Christmas. I don't know if you guys- Why don't you show them some stuff? Yeah. Congra congratulations, yeah, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're really gonna love it. You're gonna thoroughly love it, I promise okay. you that. So as you saw, I just sold the RM6501 in black NTBT. One of my favorite RMs. I just sold to a very good client of mine. He's, gonna, he's very, very happy with the piece. Um, it's actually the biggest piece I've sold so far since starting at TPT. Thanks for tuning into the video this week, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and make sure you check out next week's video next Wednesday.